even a, a very short glance at those cases uh, would reveal that there is a much more complicated picture uh, with transitional justice experiments, uh, attempts, uh, implementation, than what would be acceptable under the premise of, of the prevailing narrative of, uh, of liberal peace, where you know, external imposition is, is, is an important part. In East Timor, you see what I describe as parallel justice and multiplication of justice mechanisms related, relating to the events of uh, 1999 uh, post-referendum violence uh, where um, uh, both in, in the neighboring Indonesia that was a colonial or occupying power in East Timor before the referendum, as in East Timor that became independent after the referendum, uh, you, you saw um, kind of a concurrent and competing process of establishing transitional justice mechanisms. You have prosecutorial processes that were in many ways similar to what we saw in, in Kosovo, uh, but you also see something that you almost don't see in Kosovo, a very a strong effort in establishing truth-seeking mechanisms. And truth-seeking is best based on the pro premise that you need to find out the truth and establish, uh, document the truth about what happened in order to avoid relapse uh, uh, of the conflict, in order to uh, address the grievances that there may be of the population, and in order to establish a, an authoritative version of events in order to avoid later on um, rewriting of history or using events in, in, in other ways that you know we've seen in history a lot of uh, times that happening, including in the, in the former Yugoslavian context, where, for example, the Second World War events were, were used. As, a, as an explanation or um, as an, um, well, as a, as a mobilizing uh, narrative. So you see this, what is interesting in East Timor, you see that the number of mechanisms in total, six different mechanisms established in, in both, but focusing all on, on East Timor. And uh, that, that there, um, for example, with specifically truth commissions, you see that at one point, these are the local actors that take over the initiative and take over control of the processes. You, the initial truth commission that was established by, mainly by the UN and uh, designed and, and, and conceived of mainly by the UN, the so-called CAVR, um, it was operating for a few years until the government in East Timor and the government in Indonesia realized that this institution is proving very inconvenient to them, that the East Timorese government realized at one point that there is insufficient international political will to engage and to, to, to punish those involved. And in fact, the Truth Commission was also pointing to some of the violations committed by the East Timorese. And the Indonesian government was already from the beginning uh, not interested in, in, in doing prosecution and, and, and transitional justice because they were party to the conflict and uh, the, the, the violence and post-referendum um, large-scale violence actually happened with their uh, role and with their on their watch. So there at one point you see the process completely turning upside down where the local actors, in this case uh, the East Timorese and, and, and the Indonesians, established their own truth commission, the so-called commission for truth and friendship that were supposed to supplant the uh, the East Timorese initial commission. So, um, and then Afghanistan very briefly, um, you see there a similar sort of pattern where change in the relationship between the local actors and the international actors, so domestic and external actors, um, has significant impact on how transitional justice is being implemented. So in Afghanistan at one point early in the intervention, um, it was, possible to start a large uh, consultation process where an institution that was just established, the Afghan Independent Human Rights Commission, which by the way is led by at the moment by a former Widerfield, uh, well still a Widerfield scholar, Shaharzad Akbar. Uh, she was in our cohort, she's now chairwoman of, uh, of the Afghan Independent Human Rights Commission. Together with the UN they conducted a large-scale countrywide 
uh, survey, almost countrywide, because the Taliban were, of course, present still in some parts. And they concluded that transitional justice was very important, that people want accountability, want justice, and so on. And then early on in the process, because the dynamics were different, you see the government also adopting a transitional justice action plan, uh, which, you know, amongst other things, said that they need to work on measures to prevent impunity, work towards accountability, and so on. Fast forward a few years, and the dynamic changes. There, the local government is becoming more and more uh, proactive and, and independent or uh, in opposition to, to the international actors, including the US. And there you see that they're at one point taking over the process by not um, extending the mandate of the, of the Transitional Justice Action Plan implementation, as well as issuing an amnesty law that you know, basically cancels uh, accountability uh, measures.